protect your DNA. BioPQQ can promote formation of new mitochondria. InfoWarsStore.com It's Friday, June 30th, 2017. I'm your host, Owen Schroyer. Here's what's coming up on the Nightly News. Tonight, President Donald Trump delivers a message to the American people after the Supreme Court restored the executive order to resume the travel ban from countries with close ties to terrorism. Meanwhile, the reaction from the establishment left is sad but predictable. Not only do they want open borders and amnesty for all, but some of the progressives, like Mad Maxine, she wants the president to be exiled. And Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, she has had enough and she wants Donald Trump to resign, effective immediately. More evidence that liberalism is indeed a mental disorder. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. The key is to be aware of this attack and to fight back against it. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic organic herbs harvested around the planet and then concentrated for maximum potency. I've always believed in nutrition and herbs. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality and other powerful products from InfoWars Life. Check out these amazing deals at InfoWarsStore.com. 25% off BioTrue Selenium, a powerful antioxidant and back in stock super blue fluoride free toothpaste. Now 33% off. And while you're there, check out the Total Oral Care Pack, which combines our organic mouthwash with the amazing super blue toothpaste. Now 37% off. All available right now at InfoWarsStore.com. What a crazy time it is to be alive, ladies and gentlemen, and it is an honor to be living it here with you. We've got McCabe, the acting FBI director who's getting probed. You've got the Democrats that are absolutely panicking right now in a tailspin. Uh, you've got Wasserman Schultz, who is uh, in the need of a deep investigation as well. What is she trying to obstruct? Um, and why does she have two different reactions to the DNC being hacked and then her being hacked? And then the Russian narrative is completely collapsing all over the mainstream media, all over the Democrats. In fact, it turns out that they may have entrapped themselves with the Russian narrative. Now, John Podesta has decided to crawl out of his hole and pretend like everything is okay. And he did an interview on Fox, and he was grilled about his Russian ties. Here's that interview. Do you find it odd that there's been so much attention on the Trump campaign and the Trump associates and potential collusion with Russians when, in fact, it's really the Democrats who have deeper and stronger Ooh, ties to ouch. Russia? I mean, John, I've got to ask you about your own nice uh, situation, your Maria. ties to Russian entities. You joined the board of a small energy company in 2011. Two months later, a Russian entity directly funded by the Kremlin invested $35 billion in, in the company. Ugh. You were given 75,000 shares in, in a Russian company, uh, which you failed to disclose when you became So Maria Obama. just laid out more uh, Russian uh, collusion uh, with John Podesta than they have for months with Donald Trump. Keep the video going. Completely compliant uh, with, uh, and by the way, I divested before 
before I went into the uh, White House. But where did you uh, divest that, that it, company, John? A lot of people feel I, like I, you divested it to your adult children. I divested it uh, consistent with my, the advice that I was given mm. uh, by the White House Counsel's Office. Uh, and I oh, was now he's in, oh, and, Obama's uh, involved. Oh, uh, transparent about what I had done. And so the you know oh. the fact that you're picking through my uh, emails that were stolen by the Russians and released by WikiLeaks, <laughs> uh, you know, and uh, <laughs> creating a story which is not true. Uh, is, As he just made yeah, up a story. You were given 75,000 shares of stock in a Russian company. You were not given 75,000 shares. I didn't have any stock in any Russian company. Oh. So go back and get your facts straight, Maria. But That's if not you wanna... true, John. We know that you own 75,000 shares. You're on the board of Jones. It's not a Russian company. They it's own less than 5%. The it's backed by own... the Kremlin. I didn't own any shares in that company, Maria. Mm. When you stepped that off the board, in... you were given 75,000 shares John. from Joe no. Lee. That is not true. How many shares were you given, John? Maria, I didn't have any shares in any Russian company. I was on the board of an American company that did business now here he's dodging the and question. only here. The Russian company had a small investment in that company. And, I, you know, well, we can go around and around the tree. Well, it's widely reported that it's backed by the it's Kremlin. It's been widely reported that that company It's the Democrats the that are looking and everywhere for Russia, John. Why are you upset that we're looking at you? you didn't give when me you anything. went into the Obama administration. Maria, you can, keep, you can keep leveling this charge. It is not true. Okay. They didn't give me anything. Hmm. They had a small investment in a company I was on the board of. It was a clean energy company uh, that was trying to deal with uh, the issue of trying to produce uh, energy, uh, liquid fuel, uh, from uh, a biotechnology process. It was based in mm. Boston. It, you know, the Russian company had a very small investment in it. Oh. And you could keep saying that mm. they gave me they gave I'm me just stock, following but all they the didn't. widely reported uh, information here, John. Well, you're, this is also you're, Hillary Maria, Clinton, obviously. Maybe, you, maybe you're, report, maybe you're uh, looking at mm. widely reported uh, information from InfoWars. No, I'm not. But it is no, not. No, I'm not. This is Politico. This is the New York Times. This is the Wall Street Journal. No, it's That's not. what I'm looking at, John. No, it's not. Then now he's Hillary just denying Clinton. the truth. Then there's Hillary Clinton, of course, we know, who got $100 million uh, from, from Russian companies after uh, she allowed that Russian company to acquire 20% of the U.S.'s uranium. So the point I'm making here, mm. John, is that mm -hmm. there's much deeper ties to Russia on the Democratic side than there are on the Republican side. And it's just there, a head scratcher. Yeah, that this has been taking Maria, all the oxygen out of the room over look, Trump when, in look, fact, it's been your team that has there's been the in vampire. bed with the Russians. You know, there's the vampire, John Podesta. So, okay, first of all, what a great job by Maria Bartiromo with that interview. She is really um, coming to her own here lately. But just think about what John Podesta is saying here. He's mad that Maria is leveling a charge against him for actual Russian ties, whether they're thin or thick or whatever they may be. They're actually there. Democrats are looking everywhere for them, under every tree, under every rock, can't find anything. Maria points to one here that John has, and he says, how dare you level that charge against me? How dare you make that up? Even though it's all real, and the entire probe or investigation into Trump's Russia ties has fallen completely flat with zero. So it's amazing how John Podesta twists that reality, but then he tries to attack InfoWars. He's like, oh, Maria, what are you reading off InfoWars again or something? Oh, And she's like, well, actually, no, this is being reported widely by a bunch of different publications. So what do you have to say now, John Podesta? So he tries to attack InfoWars or discredit InfoWars like, oh, you read that story off InfoWars when we just get proven right at spades all the time. I mean, Alex Jones gets proven right and right every day, especially if you look at a timeline of history. But it's just amazing. So to me, though, this is Podesta trying to put on a normal face, go back out into public, act like everything's okay, even though the Democrat Party and his inner circle is a total dumpster fire right now. So nice try, John Podesta. You're the one that got caught. Maria just grilled you. And, um, well, those charges that she's leveling, leveling against you are actually real. And the charges that they're trying to level against Trump are completely made up and fake. So now John Podesta and his vampiric fangs that are, like, fanging out during that interview, he can go crawl back into his hole where he belongs. Now let's move on to President Trump who put out his weekly address today, updating us on everything that he's been working on this week to make America great again. Here's President Trump. My fellow Americans, this week I was joined at the White House by American families whose loved ones were killed by illegal immigrants. 
Many of these illegal immigrants had extensive criminal records and had been repeatedly deported. Every single one of these deaths was preventable. These beautiful American lives were stolen because our government refused to do its job. Mm. If the government had simply enforced our immigration laws, these Americans would still be alive today. It's a leader right there. That's why, since the day I took the oath of office, I have been restoring the enforcement of our immigration laws and the protection and defense of our borders. These courageous Americans joined me at the White House to call on Congress to pass two bills that I campaigned on during the election. If enacted, these bills will save countless American lives. The first bill, the left hates it. Kate's Law, is named for Kate Steinle, who was killed by an illegal immigrant who had been deported five times. This law will enhance criminal penalties for those who repeatedly re-enter our country illegally. The second bill, oh, the No Sanctuary for Criminals Act, will block federal grants to jurisdictions that shield dangerous criminal aliens from being turned over to federal law enforcement. That's huge. On Thursday, I am glad to report two these huge two laws bills to make America great the again. House of Representatives. This represents a crucial step toward ensuring our public safety and national security. Mm. I want to thank Judiciary Chairman Bob Goodlatte for his dedicated work on these critical bills, as well as other crucial legislation that will soon be so considered as So that's President well. Trump talking about the legislation that he has passed this week to help make America great again. How could anybody not be behind those two laws really is... Out, just astounding that somebody could be so anti-American, so tricked, so deceived, so lied to by mainstream media and Democrats and liberals that they can't even get behind those common sense laws that every American should agree with. Wow, unbelievable. Now, President Trump has completely sent the Democrats into a panic. And here in uh, Texas, Sheila Jackson Lee is really starting to show her true colors as a member of the swamp. Here is one video of her that she put on Twitter freaking out over President Trump. I don't know what to say. I think you do. That's why you did a video. Hurt feelings. Aww. Mr. President, bleeding from the face. She's got hurt feelings, guys. You're again Aww. attacking women, professional women. See, I love how they he's attacking You're women. He's atta someone what are you talking about? He just said what happened. With all of the individuals. Sheila, Sheila Jackson is something. wearing a green flower on her jacket. Oh my gosh, you just attacked You're a attacked woman. Oh. Woman. A professional woman about her IQ, someone who has <laughs> so shown triggered. herself These people are so triggered. Look at you. You're a member of our government, and you do these childish the videos on Twitter. Who's the real embarrassment? And that beauty should be from the inside? Mr. President, when people Mika are Mika is the one that gets plastic surgery. Who need mental health services, and your Trump care denies oh my gosh. billions of dollars and then to she Medicaid brings it back to help to Trump them, care, and you spend which isn't your even time law. in the morning dealing with attacking human beings that happen attacking to be Attacking human beings. Okay, so that's enough of that video. Completely just ridiculous, ridiculous claims. To President Trump attacked women on... T Give me a break. It's Mika Brzezinski, and if you actually go and look at the story, all he was doing was just said what happened. <laughs> so, But here she is now on the Hill complaining about President Trump. I end, Mr. Speaker, by apologizing to Mika Brzezinski, mm -hmm. to the press, mm -hmm. for the horrible words that were said oh my gosh. about a bleeding face. Oh. There is no way the bleeding that face. we can entrust this law or any other laws <laughs> to this president of the United States. He has lost the trust, and I will vote for nothing oh. until he steps down. This woman is, oh my gosh. Thank you for that laugh, Sheila Jackson. I mean, what a joke. Donald Trump, could. she said it, it could pass any law and she's not going to sign it. So these two laws that, that President Trump just passed that make sense for America, common sense laws, she's not behind that. So she's officially a member of the swamp. You know what, Sheila, we're going we're gonna to give you plenty of time to deal with the bleeding face that you're obsessed with when we elect somebody else to replace you. Now there's Maxine Waters. <laughs> I mean, she needs no introduction. Here's Maxine Waters again hard for me, even mm. with what I know about him, to think that he could stoop this low. Oh. Um, it is upsetting, 
Um, I've said over and over again. It's your last year in uh, office, Maxine. Enjoy it. The presidency. And uh, I've said over and over again that I do not honor him. Mm, I do not honor respect him. him. Does not and respect of course, him. Uh, the tweet that we're witnessing there today is the tweet. helps to confirm the tweet. for all of those who had any doubts uh, <laughs> that this is not presidential material. He's gone too oh far, my God. stepped way over the line. Added to all right, all right. That's enough does. for Maxine Waters, totally triggered by the tweet. And then, then she tweets that we should exile President Trump. Exile. What what is going on with these people? Maxine Waters wants to exile President Donald Trump. Maxine Waters has gone completely mental. Now, here's an interesting segment of Trey Gowdy on Fox News. What do you think he is hinting at here? Comey had access to additional information that I am convinced left him with no other choice than to make the decision he made in July. So you're saying with he had no choice, it. there was pressure on him to no, not no, no. prosecute Hillary Clinton? Is that what you're no, suggesting? No, no. No, I think he had access to information and he wanted to safeguard the integrity of the investigation and the integrity of the process. And I probably ought to just leave it right there. But no, I'm not talking about pressure. I don't think the guy, I, I don't think the guy feels pressure. Sorry I think he wanted the public to have confidence in the investigation and the outcome. Even though I disagreed with the outcome, he wanted you to have confidence in the process. He had access to information that your viewers don't have, and they may not ever have because it is classified. But trust me when I tell you this, Martha, I know what it was. Uh, and I have been a critic of Jim Comey in the past. But he made the only decision he could have made with respect to appropriating that decision away from the Department of Justice mm -hmm. and making the decision himself. And history will be a hell of a lot kinder to him than the Democrats were at the time. I, I, I only take away from that that you're suggesting that there were more entanglements between the Clintons and mm. perhaps the Justice Department than Loretta everyone Lynch. understands. Loretta Lynch. You're very perceptive. Loretta okay. Lynch. Loretta Lynch much? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, Loretta Lynch. Oh, hmm. Watch out, Loretta. Okay, now here's Jason's, Jason Chaffetz. This is from um, a, a while back, but they want to say Trump is obstructing justice. But here's what Jason Chaffetz said about his experience dealing with President Trump. Here's what he said, and I think it's worth noting. He said, uh, you do a great job, you do a great job, which of course I agreed with. And, um, and then he said, uh, and then he said, he said, listen, uh, I get, I understand that I'm the president, but you have a job to do, you do the oversight, you don't slow down, you go after everything you want to go after, you look at anything you want to look at. I mean, he, if you sat there and heard what he said to me about pursuing oversight of the government and the function that we fulfill, you'd be pretty inspired. And it was inspiring to me. And for wow. him to convey a message of don't Inspire. slow down, go do your job, uh, there's a lot to, to get after with the government. I think was Oh, a good yeah, message. there is. So, yeah, sounds like Trump was really trying to obstruct justice, giving Jason Chaffetz basically free reign to look into whatever he feels he needs to look into. But... Of course, it was all just a non-nothing burger anyway. And then you have this story. New York Times forced to retract longstanding 17 intel agencies lie. This is the one, folks. 17 intel agencies. 17 different agencies said it was Trump and Russia and hacking. Oh, 17 agencies. Oh, but it wasn't 17 agencies, was it? It happened to be only three. And when you're being led by John Brennan... How can you trust any of it? Excuse me, James Clapper, even worse. James Clapper leading people into the lie of 17 different agencies. WikiLeaks called them on that, and it's just not the case. Hey, guess what? Guess who's back in the news warning planet Earth about millions of people dying? Bill Gates. Bill Gates says a deadly mosquito-borne pandemic poses a greater threat to mankind than global war and could easily wipe out 10 million. Okay, so that's his latest one. That's not the first time. He warned back in February an epidemic could kill over 30 million people. And then in May, a terrorist could kill 30 million people. What is Bill Gates? We've taken thousands of years of known research and put it together with our own four years of seeking and, and testing to find the very best systems that God gave us through Mother Nature to detoxify the body. That's why I'm introducing Z-Shield, toxic metal and chemical defense support. It's made in the USA. It's filled with known compounds from nature that are absolutely associated with detoxifying the body and it supports the info war. It is a classical 360 win.
Our formula at InfoWarsLife.com is, quite frankly, simple. We go out and look at the recognized research, and we take it to the next level of quality, of purity, and of strength. Because this is what I personally use for myself and my family. We've gone through five or six different permutations in the last four years since we launched InfoWars Life to actually come up with this. This is the formula that I personally have been taking for over a year, and now we believe we have come as close to perfection when it comes to a detoxifier as you can possibly get. If you're not mitigating the pesticides, the heavy metals, the chemicals, if you're not trying to purify your water, if you're not trying to take products like Z-Shield that are full of known concentrated compounds that'll purify our cells and our bodies, you're crazy. You owe it to yourself, you owe it to your family, and you owe it to the future of this country and the world that patriots stay as healthy and as clean and as focused as you can be because we need you, the remnant of America, to reignite those brush fires to the next level and to be healthy and as focused as you can be. Because if you're sick, if you're over there on the sidelines and not in the fight, you're basically giving in to the new world order. Thanks to your support and your prayers, together, we're changing the world. Now it's time to change our bodies with Z-Shield at InfoWarsLife.com. I want to tell you about some of the products at InfoWarsStore.com. We are under constant attack. You know it by now from the mainstream media. They're trying to attack us on every, every level. Now with the YouTube scandal, they're demonetizing our channels, which again takes a huge chunk out of our income, which is why we always appreciate and rely on you getting the products because that's how we stay afloat. They can't get to us that way. They can't pressure you to not buy the products. They don't have that power. And that's why you're the key to this entire operation. We have super blue fluoride free toothpaste Bubblegum flavor just arrived at InfoWarsStore.com. This is by listener request. Bubblegum flavored super blue toothpaste now available at InfoWarsStore.com in limited supply. Again, if you're not using fluoride free toothpaste by now, then you're absolutely insane. Harvard studies, it reduces IQ, it causes bone cancer. It's not great, let's just put it that way. And I've been using it for about, what, 15 years now? So you're going to buy it anyway. Why not buy it from us? It's in limited supply, but it is available at InfoWarsStore.com with the new bubblegum flavor, super blue fluoride free toothpaste, and it supports this network, which is under constant demonization and attack because we don't take big fat checks from George Soros. We don't get put on extremist lists, even though they want us to. That's how they're taking away the YouTube money. That's why we need your support more than ever because we're not funded by giant corporations who are now pulling the plug on YouTube as they move it into a TV thing, a Netflix model, to drown out independent voices. So support us by getting the products at InfoWarsStore.com. When Megyn Kelly was here, I think I had one of my greatest one-liners ever when she was asking me about fake news and, she, and I was telling her how I, how I aggregate all my news and get my information. She was like, oh, you even get information from Huffington Post? And I said, well, Huffington Post gave Donald Trump a 1% chance to win the presidency, so Huffington Post is right 1% of the time. So yes, I go to Huffington Post for the 1% of truth that they offer, absolutely. And I found it today. Huffington Post, Trump's job training program gets the government out of the way. Trump's apprenticeship, apprenticeship initiative will give more control to the people who knows what skills are needed, employers. Folks, just that headline should have every American fired up. Don't we all want the government out of our way? Aren't we all sick of the government being in our life every time we turn the corner? I mean, that's what's so amazing about Trump's presidency to me is this is the revolution everybody's been waiting for. This is the revolution even the liberals in their mother's basements have been waiting for, and they don't even see it. And they don't even want to be part of the revolution they've been thinking about their whole lives. They've been tricked and deceived into missing it. And it might have something to do with this. U.S. fertility rate just hit a historic low. Hmm. 
Don't worry, though. There's no population control plan. There's no population control agenda. The Georgia Guidestones don't exist. Glyphosates are fine for you, and fluoride in the water is good. And there's no negative side effects of GMOs when you look down uh, the lineage, third, fourth, fifth generation. None of that happens. And the fertility rate hitting a historic low has nothing to do with all the chemicals we ingest. And um, I'm sure that that's just a coincidence. You know what? It's probably global warming. Let's get Al Gore on that issue. He'll solve it. You know, folks, it's been highly scrutinized uh, what the president wants to do with the press in the White House as far as limiting their capabilities or limiting press briefings, etc. Well, you want to know why? You want to know why the president feels that way? Look at these videos that came out of the Oval Office today. These people are insane, okay? This, this media scrum is out of control. Go ahead and roll the video, guys. So President Trump has a private meeting with the president of South Korea, and then they open the doors for the press, and look at how these people literally come flying into the room out of control, knocking over lamps, knocking over furniture, trying to battle for position. And actually, in this video, you can hear Trump's audio saying, geez, guys, calm down, man. Take it easy, fellas. What is the big deal? These people are out of control. These people are freaks. I think we missed the audio on that, but that's fine. Yeah, so here's another angle. Roll that other angle, too. Look at these people. Look at this. <laughs> I have, I'm telling you, folks. I, boy, if I was even asked to be a part of the White House press gaggle or, 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 or to cover it for InfoWars. I don't, I, see, even though that's such a big honor, a big resume builder, okay, a big part of history, it's like, I don't want to be around these people. These people are nuts. These people don't have a life. They obsess. These are fanatics. That is just crazy. No wonder President Trump wants to limit the press and the media that comes into the White House every day. Look at the crazed behavior that they exhibit. My goodness. So, wow. Now, Jim Acosta is one of them. He's probably the worst. And again, Acosta is complaining about how they can't have cameras, complaining to Sean Spicer. I mean, Jim, why don't you just give up? Why don't you just leave? We don't want you, we don't want you there. You've been exposed as fake news. The president calls you fake news. You know, I really hope Jim Acosta gets paid well to be CNN's court jester, because that's all he is. CNN says, go, Jim, make an ass of yourself, embarrass yourself, annoy the president, annoy the, annoy the rest of the press, let everybody laugh at you. And so that's Jim Acosta's life, folks. How would you like to be Jim Acosta? But then you have MSNBC. Everybody's freaking out over Trump's tweet. MSNBC, Donnie Dorsch to Trump. You're a pig. You're a bully. Well, how about this? PMS, NBC, you are fake news. And I have a feeling that you're going to be very limited in your role. And then, of course, Hollywood's complaining. And we've got more on all of this from our own John Bound. But a Fox poll says that people don't like Trump's tweets, but they're actually working. I think he's been very clear that when he gets attacked, uh, he's going to hit back. I think the American people elected somebody who's tough, who's smart, and who's a fighter. And that's Donald Trump. And I don't think that it's a surprise to anybody that he fights fire with fire. But he's not going to sit back and be attacked by the liberal media, Hollywood elites, and when they hit him, he's going to hit back. Ask yourself as a citizen, are you more inclined to support yellow journalism over the unyielding attacks weighed upon the executive office? A media bias backed by the failing globalist agenda, boldly called out by the executive office. A cry bully resistance currently led by none other than Mika Brzezinski, daughter of New World Order architect and co-founder of the Trilateral Commission, the late Zbigniew Brzezinski. This is how Barry Goldwater described the Trilateral Commission. The Trilateralist Commission is international and is intended to be the vehicle for multinational consolidation of the commercial and banking interests. 
by seizing control of the political government of the United States. I think it's been fascinating um, and frightening and really sad for our country. I mean, I'm, you know, I've been getting a lot of texts and hearing you all talking. Thank you. I'm fine. Um, my family brought me up really tough. This is absolutely nothing. It was easier to control a million people than physically to kill a million people. In recent decades, worldwide social change has experienced unprecedented historical acceleration, particularly because instant mass communications, such as radio, television, and the internet, cumulatively have been stimulating a universal awakening of mass political consciousness. The resulting widespread rise in worldwide populist activism is proving inimical to external domination of the kind that prevailed in the age of colonialism and imperialism. Persistent and highly motivated populist resistance of politically awakened and historically resentful peoples to external control has proven to be increasingly difficult to suppress. I mean, we had so many people saying, hey, hope you're okay, hope you're okay, at calls and texts and, and, and emails. We're okay. The country's not. That really saddens me because it is so beneath the dignity of the President of the United States to engage in such behavior. I just don't know why the Republicans, they, they can tolerate almost anything. Nothing yeah. makes a man photo. feel better than making a fake cover of a magazine yes. about himself, lying every day and destroying the country. Uh, oh, well, he's covering his hands here because they're dizzy. When you can't beat someone with a point or information, so you have to go to name calling, it's a race to the bottom and no one wins. I wouldn't have replied the way Mika did, though. She replied uh, oh, with a, a box of Cheerios and it said made for little hands, which, you know, I did laugh at, but then I... <laughs> Then I moved on to the idea that, you know, let him hang himself. Let yes. his words be the ugly ones, because that's not where you go. You don't go down. Like, keep the game high, as mm -hmm. they say. As they go low, you yeah. go high. You don't have to be so snotty. No, I was I'm about to curious. say, you didn't let me get it out. You don't have to be so rude. Well, no, I... The fact of the matter is that they are not. Bobby Kennedy, as I was about to say, but you wanted to get your cheap shot in, so you got your cheap shot in. If conduct like this was going on in a schoolyard anywhere across this country, the teacher would take this child who had called someone dumb, called someone inappropriately, and give him a time out. Mr. President, it is time for you to take a time out. Mm. And I would argue that our responsibility is not to him, but to the American people, and he should resign. Mm. My two cents, President Trump has the support of this citizen to tweet until his fingers go numb, especially when the social media attacks rain hellfire on the treasonous cry bullies protecting their precious globalist construct, whether they know it or not, that has killed millions and threatened and the sovereignty of the United States of America. John Bound for Infowars.com. Electrify your day with Secret 12. It's like lightning in a bottle. We all have days in which we just can't seem to perform at the level we'd like to. InfoWars Live Secret 12 is designed to naturally energize your body and mind with two great tasting and super high quality forms of vitamin B12. Proper vitamin and nutrient intake is essential to keep your body functioning at optimum levels. The reality is, it's hard to take in the proper amount of vitamins we need each day with our modern diets. Secret 12 by InfoWars Life is an easy way to naturally upgrade your vitamin B12 intake and support your body's natural systems. It pairs two forms of vitamin B12 into one explosive formula. Vitamin B12 supports healthy energy levels through red blood cell formation and aiding in the body's natural processes, but it also assists with many other functions of the body. Electrify your mind and body and take your health to the next level. Experience the power of Secret 12 at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. 
vitamin mineral fusion. Visit InfoWarsLife.com to secure your canister. We have worked for years with our chemists and scientists to create the most powerful and affordable, great-tasting multivitamin formula available. Vitamin mineral fusion drink mix at InfoWarsLife.com is loaded with a full month supply of essential vitamins, minerals, and amino acids that your body absolutely needs. In the history of InfoWars Life, we've brought out a lot of amazing products like Survival Shield X2, Super Male Vitality, and so many others. With its unique delivery system and proprietary manufacturing process designed for maximized effects, this formula is the platinum standard of multivitamin mineral products. And this part is most important. The ingredients in Vitamin Mineral Fusion are either plant-derived or of the highest quality lab standard. That means it's clean. That means it's pure. And rest secured, you're fighting the tip of the spear in the info war. That's InfoWarsLife.com and Vitamin Mineral Fusion. Take action now before we sell out. We have the new product at InfoWarsLife.com, BioTrue Selenium. We've had so many requests over the years for selenium, and just recently, we were able to source a certified organic bioavailable selenium from mustard seed extract. When you take selenium in the body, it actually benefits the detoxification systems in your body. It helps balance the thyroid gland. It helps detoxify. Selenium is another one of those absolute must-haves. The highest concentration of selenium is in the thyroid gland, but it's actually used all over the body. As a matter of fact, there's 25 genes in the body that are directly dependent upon selenium. So it really is a all-around nutrient that everybody really needs. I'm taking it now every day. This is so key. BioTrue Selenium is the product, the best selenium that we could bring you. We believe it's the best out there at a very, very low price. Exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. We're selling a product, DNA Force, that is the very best nutraceutical that we can produce. Dr. Group, you took years for you to develop DNA Force for us. It's been something that I've been working on for a long time, Alex, because I think it's very, very important. What the aging process is, is when the cell replicates, we lose a little bit of our telomeres. Telomeres are the little cups on the end of our chromosomes. And when it runs out, you start dying. We chose the PQQ because it has over 175 different clinical trials. It's one of the most effective substances in the world. It works like an antioxidant. It works to repair nerve growth factor. It's so this is a formula to deliver the maximum amount. It's in powder form. We have so many five-star reviews. I take this. This is this is the product that I take. Infowarslife.com and the profit we make. We fight the globals. We fight the new world order. Secure your DNA force today at Infowarslife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. This is Robert Kiyosaki for Infowars.com. Millie Weaver reporting for InfoWars.com. We're here in Bozeman, Montana at the Red Pill Expo with a very special person. Now, he was one of the speakers. This is Robert Kiyosaki. Now, Robert, you did a great job on your speech, but I really have been dying to ask you, what advice would you give to millennials that are struggling financially? Well, I, I always ask people, what did you learn about money in school? And for the answer for most people, it's nothing. They've all learned economics, balance a checkbook, but that's really not money. And the reason they don't learn about money is because the story of Rich Dad, Poor Dad is my poor dad was a PhD, which stands for poor, helpless, and desperate. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a good man. But as you know, they don't learn much about money. And see, my father knew nothing about money. And that's the problem. So we have all these academic elites, you know, like Obama and Hillary and those guys, they run the country with no financial education. <laughs> Robert is the author of many books. Can you tell us about some of your books? Well, Rich Dad, Poor Dad is the, um, he was on the New York Times bestseller for almost seven years, plus three other books. It was four in the, four in the top ten. And I flunked out of school because I can't write. <laughs> I'll mention that. But anyway, they yanked it because they didn't like a capitalist book being on their bestseller list. But if you look at Publishers Weekly, my book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, is still number one, three to number one. But the New York Times will not recognize it. And I think that's kind of telling about the media and what's really going on is because most um, 
journalists are like my poor dad, you know, very smart people. I think they mean well, but without financial education, they have to take a point of view that the rich are evil and greedy. You know, the rich don't pay taxes, <laughs> you know. And America was born as a tax-free nation. And now they think paying taxes is patriotic. So, I, you know, our problem is our leaders have no financial education. That's why we're going broke. They're a bunch of crooks. Do you think that a lot of the reason that so many wealth is business people like Donald Trump, that they're not paying taxes? Well, I know you show that amazing model and how there's two different sides and they're thinking obviously on a different level. But do you think that it could be partially because they have the means to hire tax attorneys and accountants and people that are so aware of all of this? Absolutely. You know, business is a team sport. You know, I, in school, I was a C student, you know, and I always sat next to the A student. That's called cheating in school. But in the business world, that's called smart business procedure. Yeah. <laughs> right. So if I, mean, I hear people complain about the bureaucrats, my poor dad, my, most of my family are bureaucrats, you know, highly educated bureaucrats. And they complain about them. Man, any businessman can kick their butt financially, you know what I mean? Yeah. So when I hear somebody complaining about the bureaucrats, I'm going, boy, you must be Pee Wee Herman or a wimp or something. You know, so when I go into a meeting with the IRS, I just go with my accountants and my attorneys. And we have a nice discussion on tax law. And that's how I got smarter as an entrepreneur, because I'm not a very smart guy, I'm academically. So if a kid goes into school, they take out the student loans and they frivol it away and then they don't graduate. That's when that student loan becomes an albatross around their neck. So before a student takes out a student loan, they'd better be really sure they want to graduate. Because if they don't graduate, and graduating is not a, not a save, not, doesn't save you, but you're a little better off. If you drop out, you're finished. That's the tragedy. So it really is a huge risk to take out a student loan. And we're seeing a lot of these millennials falling into that, and now we see them thinking about communism, what would you say to people thinking that communism is the solution for how things are in America right now? Well, I'm, I'm afraid because there's low financial education, people don't know what a communist is. See, most people who work for the government who believe in equality or for everybody, which is noble, you know what I mean, it's a noble, you want everybody to be, share the wealth and everybody should have equal, you know, that's communism. But it actually comes from the heart. And they don't know what communism is. And we have more communists in government and in the school system, good people, but they don't know they're communists. If you support that, that's fine, but I'm a former U.S. Marine, two tours in Vietnam. I didn't fight for communism, I fought for capitalism. That's the difference. And we've seen how Donald Trump obviously has the rich dad mentality. I mean, he is so successful and he's a very savvy businessman. And I think that's why a lot of people were so curious to see how he would do as the president to see, let's see if a businessman can actually do a better job running the country than a politician or a bureaucrat, so to speak. So you said you know President Trump and it seems like you knew him pretty well. What can you tell us about him? Well, first of all, he and I wrote two books together. I'm the only other person that shared the cover, and we we're supposed to write the third book, except I said, hey, it's time to write the third book. He goes, I'm sorry, I'm running for office. I said, good luck. <laughs> now, he, he is a fantastic man. So I feel for my friend Donald. He's a great man. He has the same disease I have, foot and mouth. <laughs> <laughs> or tweet and mouth, you know, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but, you know, and I can't just, I'm so politically incorrect that that's what he is, and it's unfortunate, you know? Everybody says, well, stop tweeting. Like, well, it's Donald. And people look at it as, what, et tu kufufu or something he wrote, he tweeted. At the same time, he went to NATO, and he said to NATO, pay up. You guys are not paying your bills. Then he went to Saudi Arabia and says, let's kick ISIS's butt. You know, that's the kind of leader he is, but the press never covers that. And what people don't cover is that, and I'm not Republican or Democrat, I'd rather stay neutral. President Obama was a fellow Hawaiian, or maybe he's from Argentina, or where else he could be from, <laughs> South America. No, he's from Africa, that's right. But anyway, he gave Iran $150 billion. 
Iran is the biggest exporter of terrorism in the world, next to Qatar. Then he released those Guantanamo guys, and he says, I want you boys, you be good boys now, and you promise not to be terrorists anymore. <laughs> oh, yes, President Obama, we promise. And they all run to Qatar, and they're in action that afternoon. You know oh. what I mean? And we're after Trump for firing the FBI director, and we all know the FBI is a little tainted also. The CIA, I mean, I know a little bit about the CIA because as a Marine pilot, I was recruited by them to fly trucks. And I don't do drugs, I'm pretty straight. <laughs> and, uh, so anyway, our whole system is suspect right now. It's all these bureaucrats and people with their hands in the pot. And the question I ask all over the world, it's all over the world, why does a politician go into office poor and leave rich? How does that happen? That's corruption. But nobody says anything about that. They get Trump for some goofy thing, you know? And the trouble with the special prosecutor, because I know, because I've had one of them on my butt, <laughs> this is the thing I'm, I'm afraid of, because Trump's my friend, they'll find something. You know, when I, I, I was guilty, I got accused of in the Marine Corps, and they came and they started unturning over the rocks. Oh my God. Because all the things I did, I thought I got away with. I didn't get away with. <laughs> yes. I just pled guilty and just got off to get off. You know, I, I was never, they let everything go. But my, my, my concern for my friend, the president, is they're going to find something. And it doesn't make a difference what they find. They will find something. Well, you know, that's why typically we don't allow fishing expeditions in our justice system but of course they're going to try and dig and dig and dig try to illegally survey him and so on and so forth and we have already seen what happened with um, Michael Flynn so I'm sure we'll see more but you know overall if you just have one more thing to say about the Red Pill Expo and what you would advise other Americans out there to do to wake up and red pill their friends what would you say to them? Well, I thought it was funny, the local media here in Bozeman calls us a white supremacist meeting. I'm not white. <laughs> I had to crack up, you know. I mean, they just label us. But anyway, the, the Red Pill Expo is, was for out-of-the-box thinking. I came here as a participant as well as a speaker because I need new ideas. I need some out-of-the-box ideas. And that's why I come to the Red Pill Expo. You come for the out-of-the-box ideas because that's what we need today. Today, and America's in serious, serious, serious trouble. And all of us need to be more vigilant, not less vigilant. Well, thank you so much, Robert. And we all really enjoyed your speech. So thank you so much for giving us this time. And thank you to InfoWorlds because you guys are doing a great job. Jones here with a very important news update to anybody out there that wants to be prepared. But it goes beyond being prepared. Our bodies absolutely must have the good halogen iodine or we will die. And you look at all of the thyroid problems and all the people that don't have energy and that have all sorts of hormone problems. And from my research and a lot of just mainline research, it leads back to iodine over and over and over again. It's as important as vitamin C. If you don't get iodine, you die. But most people are just efficient, so they're low energy, they're sick. You gotta have iodine in your body so that your body can produce the hormones you need. It is the base to so many things. And since I got into iodine four years ago, we've helped change the entire paradigm by developing and bringing to the public deep earth crystals from seven to 12,000 feet of the purest iodine available. Other iodine comes from the ocean or from other byproducts of chemical facilities and is tainted. It's, 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 it's bound, it's, it's not absorbable. I tried it. And I had incredible effects even with dirty iodine because the body needs it. When you don't have iodine, it absorbs the chlorine, the fluoride, and all these other bad halogens. Do yourself and your family a favor and check out the importance of iodine for yourself. I think you're going to be blown away. And whatever you do, support the broadcast and get a bottle of Survival Shield Nascent Iodine X2. Also, consult your physician because if you've been deficient in it or have other issues, it can have some dramatic effects. As for me and most folks I talk to, it's been a game changer in the positive column. But still, consult your physician because iodine is no joke. It's a key building block of the body. And if you haven't had it for a long time and suddenly have it, some folks say they've experienced things like... Uh, 
uh, a detoxing effect and things like that. You've got to have vitamin C. You've got to have iodine to live. You've got to have water to live. Iodine is key. You must have it. But consult your physician first before you get powerful survival shield nascent iodine x2 at infowarslife.com or call toll free we can answer your questions 888-253-3139 why should we care about the architecture that surrounds us this isn't just about feeling aesthetically pleased by what we see Buildings broadcast a message. Good and bad architecture can lift or subdue the human spirit. The architecture we leave behind also represents the legacy of our contribution to human history. The buildings we build directly impact our quality of life and the nature of the environment that surrounds us. And that's why this matters, because aesthetic ugliness encourages ugly behavior. Municipal pride evaporates. Your ability to create places that are meaningful and places of quality and character depends entirely on your ability to define space with buildings in order to inform us who we are. And when you degrade the public realm, you will automatically degrade the quality of your civic life. Oh, but there's no good or bad architecture, just like there's no good or bad art. It's all subjective. All we were spoilt by thousands of years of brilliant architecture, all of it different in style, but impeccable in taste. Now we're increasingly surrounded by atrocities like this. Why is modernist and postmodernist architecture so grotesque? Because after World War II, radical architects launched a revolution against earlier traditionalist styles, believing they represented colonialism, racism, slavery, and exploitation. It was the revenge of mediocrity upon talent and taste. They were the social justice warriors of their time, aesthetic terrorists. The architectural equivalent of abstract modern artists. And just like virtually all abstract modern artists, everything they produced was relentlessly hideous. Post-war architects were also egomaniacs who were so strident about standing out from the beauty that preceded them, they rebelled by producing unremittent ugliness. The American architect, Louis Sullivan, expressed the credo of the modernists when he said that form follows function. In other words, Stop thinking about the way a building looks and think instead about what it does. Sullivan's doctrine has been used to justify the greatest crime against beauty that the world has yet seen, and that is the crime of modern architecture. And the result proves as clearly as can be that if you consider only utility, the things you build will soon be useless. This building is boarded up because nobody has a use for it. Nobody has a use for it because nobody wants to be in it. Nobody wants to be in it because the thing is so damned ugly. Everything has been vandalized. But we shouldn't blame the vandals. This place was built by vandals, and those who added the graffiti merely finished the job. But just like the art world, this rejection of the establishment has become the establishment. Prince Charles was right. What I do not think is sensible in the long run and right is when the avant-garde becomes the establishment and that is what has happened i believe not only in architectural terms but in uh, in many other areas as well not only is modernist architecture manifestly horrid it's inherently totalitarian. Modernist guru Le Corbusier deliberately lobbied for the construction of giant, brutalist residential tower blocks on the fringes of cities to atomize and segregate the workers and the lower classes from the technocratic elite. We must create a mass production state of mind, he raved, demanding every city in the world adopt the same uniform style of bleak, concrete totalitarianism. To produce a utopian new society which uh, would in a sense be social engineering through architecture. Cities like London and Birmingham have been irreparably damaged by Le Corbusier inspired brutalist tower blocks that attract nothing but crime and degradation. Ceausescu style mass housing that served to desecrate both the landscape and people's aspirations. What was rebuilt after the war has succeeded in wrecking London skyline and obliterating the view of St Paul's in a jostling scrum of skyscrapers, all competing for attention. And look at Birmingham. Birmingham's city centre became a monstrous concrete maze 
that only cars could find their way through. People didn't stand a chance. Cars were placed above people, and people were placed one above the other on concrete shelves. Modernist architects had so little foresight that after a short time, these tower blocks, streaked with water stains and infested with moss, mimicked and provoked the moral decay of their surroundings. Now, the plastic cladding intended to provide a half-hearted facelift has only succeeded in turning them into death traps. The problem with Grenfell Tower is a very deep-seated one. It goes back to the point at which it was thought popular to put up tower blocks as an exercise in social engineering. There are opinion surveys going back to the 1940s and when people are asked what type of property they want to live in, 80% say houses, 2 or 3% say tower blocks. What, Mr. Speaker, did the politicians and the bureaucrats give to the people so that there are 4,000 of them now blighting our landscape? We gave them tower blocks, which they did not want. We must recognize that people want houses, not tower blocks, and we must build them houses and get rid of tower blocks and then allow them, as Margaret Thatcher did, to become homeowners. In the 1950s, local authorities even wanted to demolish the Georgian city of Bath, the most architecturally beautiful city in the whole of England, and bury it under these. As Theodore Dalrymple notes, the British are barbarians, camped out in the relics of an older and superior civilization, to whose beauties they are oblivious. The despairing malaise that seems to hang heavy in the UK air permeates from these concrete monuments to misery up and down the country. And if anyone's to blame, it's Nazi collaborator Le Corbusier. Said to be the most influential, the most admired, and the most detested architect of the 20th century. He schemed to destroy entire cities to realize his fevered dream of autocratic urban planning. And he was partly successful. Everywhere you go in London, these hulking monoliths impose their repulsiveness, ruining the harmony of entire townscapes, ghettoising the environment, forcing people to live in concrete ant heaps. Queen Square in Old Shrafford. This is where I grew up and it was demolished in the late 1960s. And in a way, it was like having one's childhood wiped away. In Queen Square, my grandmother occupied the fourth house we occupied the fifth house, and the sixth house was occupied by my mother's sister and her family. So it was a very strong community. Similar to how they rewired our brains to enjoy dumbed down, repetitive pop music. We've been indoctrinated into believing that vulgar is cool. In smaller cities and suburbs, instead of mixed use environments, Everything is segregated. The tyranny of zoning has created austere pockets of hopelessness, separated by vast, soulless highways. This mechanically crushes any prospect of community or municipal dignity. And we can't overestimate the amount of despair that we are generating with places like this. We're witnessing the uglification of the world. The globalist goal is to make the whole planet identical in its atomizing dreariness. By dulling our senses, they hope to dull our very life essence. This is all inherently totalitarian, but in an age of ugliness, a work of beauty is an act of defiance. And thankfully, there are still small pockets of resistance. Advocates of neo-traditional architecture survive, and they're still erecting buildings like the Shermerhorn Symphony Centre in Nashville and the entire town of Poundbury in England. Look, this isn't a rant against modernity. I'm not saying that every building should be a pastiche or a facsimile. It's a rant against the hostility to the past that dominates postmodernist architecture. Just as hatred of and guilt about the past dominates virtually every aspect of postmodernism. It's a rant against the contrived exaltation of vulgarity which is being used as an insidious form of social engineering. Just like in art, entertainment and music, we need to rail against the relativist, collectivist, post-modernist lie that objective standards of beauty don't exist. They do. They always will. And while taste will always be subjective, we must never accept ugliness as a form 
of beauty. Thanks to everybody who tuned in. Support us at InfoWarsStore.com. You stay classy, InfoWarriors. I am very proud to announce the introduction of the highest quality InfoWars Biome Defense Probiotic. We wanted to come out with the largest spectrum of high quality known probiotics that have been proven to improve overall digestion and health and detoxification in the body. Biome Defense is an exclusive blend of 50 billion live and active cultures from over 23 different probiotic strains that are known to support digestion and intestinal function. Our researchers are confident that we have been able to develop what will be the leading probiotic on the market. Secure your biome defense in ultra strength or regular strength at InfoWarsLife.com today and get started supporting your digestive system naturally. We've been testing this formula for years, but this is the limited first run to the public, so please take advantage of it today. Support your own health and support the InfoWar. It's Friday, June 30th, 2017. I'm your host, Owen Schroyer. Here's what's coming.